So, <laughs> so in this talk we will address two questions. Uh, the talk is in general about uh, consciousness, free will and science. The two questions we will address are first, is uh, today science compatible with uh, free will and consciousness? Second question, is uh, today science uh, simply compatible or are consciousness and free will important principles for today science? So like uh, principles that have to be integrated in the structure of science. I would like to begin with uh, which we could say is the entry in quantum physics, the effect of interference. We have here a laser source, a source of light, emitting, let's say, particles of light. Here we have a half silvered mirror, if you wish also so-called a beam splitter, so that if you put here two detectors, you will uh, count 50% of light coming here and 50% coming here. Okay, that is a beam splitter, a half silvered mirror. This is experimental fact. Now, we, are, we built an interferometer in this way. You put here a full mirror so that all light arriving here gets reflected and here also a full mirror so you can guide the light to these two detectors here here there is for the moment nothing nothing how many light do you detect here and here 50 percent also okay now we put here a device like this one another beam splitter or another half silvered mirror so and then you have what we call an interferometer eh? a Mach sender interferometer that is much uh, the same works much the same like a Michelson Morley interferometer then I ask you how many light we get here and how many light we get here? You would say? 50% because you are saying 50 here, 25, 25, okay? So your guess is 50% here and 50% here. This would be the rational answer if light is consist something in something like particles, like bullets. The experiment is not giving this result, is not uh, confirming this prediction. The experiment uh, shows you that you get here 100% and here 0%. That is the effect the phenomenon of interference. And uh, because of this phenomenon, uh, scientists came to the idea or to the model of light like waves. Because if you conceive that light obeys the laws of waves, 
then you could say here you have a wave coming so this way and another way, wave coming so this way and uh, without entering all details because this wave uh, will part of this wave will go reflected so and part will go transmitted ok um, and part of this wave will go also transmitted and part of this wave will go reflected You see, and because for the red wave you have here transmission and here reflection, for the yellow one you have here reflection and here transmission, both waves are in phase, come out with the same phase, and they uh, have a constructive interference and so you get all the light going here, 100%. Because on the other side, you have transmission, transmission, and you have here reflection and reflection, and this means these two waves go out in opposite phase, okay? And because of this, they destroy each other, and so you get here zero percent. Now, suppose that you change the length of this path, putting here a system of mirrors, okay, of full mirrors, so that and with the skew that allow you to change this length, the length of this path. So you will get, let us put here the difference of the length of the path, we call this the phase, and here the counting rates of the detectors. This we call this detector the detector zero, and here is the detector one. They are the two detectors. Okay. Then we have here the detector zero. At the beginning, when the two, when the first, the difference was zero, how many we have here? Hundred percent. So, and then when you begin to change the path, you get here a sinus dependence like this. You are going through hundred percent to zero percent and then away hundred and zero and then the other one you are get starting from zero to hundred and again to zero here and so on okay so these are experimental facts and then uh, you would say, well, very well, then we have here a model working with waves, so there are one wave going this way to this detector and waves going to this detector, bar, but the two detectors are 
influenced all the time by the waves. And uh, because the waves are traveling both paths, then the detectors are firing according to the mathematics of waves. And you get these typical patterns for describing interference with waves. Well, if this would be the whole story, then what would happen? Suppose you go down with the intensity of light here, you diminish the intensity of light, you are using very weak source, because you have all the time go waves going so and going so, for instance, suppose we have a length uh, such that you get here in this detector sixty percent. How many you get in the other one? Forty. Okay. It would be so. But in any case, if you have waves going so and waves going so both detectors will always fire together. One detector will fire more, the other will a, a bit uh, stronger, the other a bit weaker, but you have, you would have light all the time going this path and this path. So that is the prediction if only waves would matter, and these waves would be material waves. However, it is not so. Eh? That is the so-called photoelectric effect. What happens is that when you are going down with intensity of light, only one of this detector will fire, if this fire, the other will not fire, and if detector one fire, zero will not fire. And that is what we are saying, particle is behaving according to the mathematical of waves, to the mathematics of waves, but it is also behaving like if light consists of particles of packets of energy of photons. That is, you have to cope with these two uh, pictures. So, um, you will get here, you see, you will get here, suppose, first of all, this detector fire, then the other one, then detector zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, 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 and so on. Okay? You register which of the two detectors fires. Uh, quantum physics predicts the distribution. Okay? These roles Okay. For instance, with this path length difference, quantum physics predicts that detector zero will fire 60% of the time, and the other one will fire 40% of the time. Okay. For instance, if you get, uh, uh, you measure during 10 minutes, and you have a certain number of counts, then 60% of the counts happen in detector zero and 40% in the other one, in detector one. Uh, the, this statistic is what quantum physics predicts.
However, quantum physics states this order here, in which order come the ones and the zeros, this is unpredictable. Why this? You see, what here happens is quite astonishing because it means that both detectors are firing according to the path length difference and this means some what, somehow they are receiving each of these detectors information about the two lengths of the path in order that they keep firing correctly according to this distribution but at the other time it means that because only when fires at a time that the two detectors have to be coordinated. If one fires, the other doesn't fire and vice versa. So it is necessary to have here between these two detectors a coordination. Uh, so that uh, there is a decision. If you fire, I then fire. If I fire, you then fire. They have to, to agree with each other. Well, this was... Uh, how can you explain this? Uh, it is quite amazing because you are saying, well, uh, there is this coordination, but what happens? To have a coordination between these two detectors, you could say, if the two detectors are near to each other, then that can be a communication. But you could put these two detectors quite far away of each other. Okay? You are reproducing this part of the spirit. Okay. Here. If you put this quite far away of each other, then it is impossible that there is a communication by material means, by so like a signal, a signal of, uh, 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 of radio or like a, a signal of uh, like phoning between these two detectors because uh, signals in space and time cannot travel faster than light that is uh, that is not only a question of uh, the relativity theory okay? it is much more stronger than this it is the result it is an experimental result. Actually, it is the result of the Michelson Morley experiment. So, we know that we cannot phone, we cannot send signals faster than light. If there is a coordination here between these two detectors, this coordination is not happening in space and time. By the way, I have to say that this discussion about this uh, phenomenon and detection started in the year 27, in the so-called uh, 1927, in the so-called uh, Solvay Conference. And uh, it was the way, the first uh, <laughs> big attack of Einstein against quantum physics because he, he was uh, answering to the quantum physicists like uh, Born, Heisenberg, Bohr means Bohr, Einstein was saying, look, what you tell means that between these two detectors there is a communication faster than light and this is impossible and therefore quantum physics is incomplete, is wrong. Okay. 
has, has to be completed. This was the first, uh, um, the first time where this idea of non-locality comes out by Einstein. <coughs> well, amazingly, this experiment has not been done till uh, uh, some weeks ago. The experiment has now been done in Geneva, in the laboratory of quantum optics in Geneva, and the results will be posted in the archive in the coming weeks, in the coming days. The result is that when you separate these detectors far away from each other so that they cannot communicate, there is no chance. <coughs> the results are uh, exactly the same as when the detectors are near to each other. So this, this, would, this is quite interesting because, you see, suppose that these detectors are far away from each other and that therefore they cannot coordinate. There cannot be a coordination between these two detectors. What will happen? That from time to time, if there is no coordination, both detectors will fire together and from time to time no one of them will fire. Okay? So, you see here a very amazing thing is that this non-local coordination or a coordination happening by means which are not in space and time is ensuring the conservation of energy. So, the conservation of energy in each single quantum event, <coughs> is, if you wish, the most material law in physics that energy is conserved. This requires non-local coordination, this, that is, coordination happening not in space-time, coming from outside space-time, that is to say also non-material coordination. Okay? The most material principle, conservation of energy, is here related to the phenomenon of non-locality to the phenomenon of non-material agency in today physics. This is now, uh, this interference effect is now uh, entering also the domain of life. To explain it, there are already experiments showing that interference or quantum coherence is important for explaining the phenomenon of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis happens in plants, in the leaves of plants, uh, very roughly in the following way. You have big uh, molecules calling uh, molecule complexes called light harvesting centers they are light harvesting centers and this here is the reaction center Okay, and uh, if when photon comes here, a particle of light, and hits this center here, produce an exciton. That is a molecule that is like a pair of uh, 
you can say so plus and minus charge together a pair of uh, uh, ion charges with a plus positive and uh, um, electron charges charges <coughs> negatively but the the pairs that remain together that is um, and they have to travel from here to this reaction center where they are producing the typical reaction of photosynthesis um, it is like uh, if you wish uh, that is it, uh, the fact that they are not separated means that uh, you are they are prepared to give energy but in a such a way that can travel to the center without damaging the the, the cells and when they arrive to the center then they deliver the energy okay that is uh, very roughly how photosynthesis works the problem is that from get from here to the center <coughs> it is like a random walk it would be you know here here and probably go away or here come here and go away it's like uh, if you shot a football ball through a forest through a tight forest the probability that the ball reach the other stream of the forest is quite quite little okay and amazingly the, this process is efficient with a very uh, large efficiency that means that all photons hidden the uh, light harvesting centers produce a pair which it is almost sure will reach with a very high probability I think it is 99% will reach the reaction center classically is this impossible once again it's like uh, shot in a ball through a tight forest but because of quantum interference because of this phenomenon here you can get this high efficiency I will explain you with an illustration suppose this is the reaction center here okay here you see. And then we have here the photons arriving. <laughs> so here arrive the photons, you have a reaction center. Efficiency very little. <laughs> This phenomenon of interference produces, in this particular case, what we call the quantum funnel. Here is a funnel. <laughs> that is the quantum funnel. And then the photons arrive. And because of quantum funnel, Big efficient. <laughs> that is what happens in photosynthesis because of this phenomenon. What I am telling to you here <coughs> is that this funnel we use here, see, of metal and material actually it is not in space-time this quantum funnel is something which is working 
from outside space time. It is not material. So that is the amazing point of quantum physics. There is place, so in today's physics, for effects which are rolled by principles, <coughs> by influences which are not material. And so there is compatibility with quantum physics with what we call non-material principles or if you wish spiritual principles like free will, consciousness, etc. The compatibility is possible because you see there is no material determination <coughs> of this information here, of this uh, bit second. Science gives you how many percent of ones you can get and how many percent of outcome zero you will get. But about the order here, <coughs> science Quantum physics says nothing. It is wrong because the phone is not material. Quantum physics says we will never be able to predict this order. So that uh, nothing speaks against that uh, in such a device you get here a sequence of bits that would be, for instance, the Divina Commedia of Dante digitalized. This would be perfectly compatible with quantum physics. You can, well, and then you can say, and this is the second part of the talk, uh, it's only a matter of compatibility or is something more. Personally, I think there is something more. Um, what you, um, you could say, well, such a device in the lab <coughs> is not produced in the Divina Commedia. Okay, I agree. But uh, uh, my brain now, when I'm speaking to you, is not produced in the Divina Commedia. <laughs> But is uh, uh, making, I hope, uh, sound sentences. I try to transmit to you some information which I think is original and, uh, and uh, is, uh, is something I am telling to you. So that, uh, uh, according to these basic principles of quantum physics, what I am telling now to you are outcomes. You can digitalize what I am telling to you in ones and zeros. Okay? And uh, you could say, well, my brain is a physical device, surely, and as such obeys certain laws of physics, surely, but these laws are certain, if you wish, physiological parameters in the brain that uh, probably impose certain statistics. But even so, I can now produce a sequence of bits which is not uh, pure random, in the sense that it, it has a meaning, and uh, nothing, is, this is not in contradiction at all about, against a possible statistical distribution predicted or imposed by the uh, physical rules 
the quantum physical role. Now you can say, well, one could object, yes, but you can influence. So I would say, I would say, I could make an order here like I wish. It is possible. I can influence with my non-material free will and non-material mind. I can put an information in the world like I am uh, uh, doing now when I speak to you. Uh, but uh, this uh, uh, information you can influence all the time. So you can you can make outcomes distributed like you wish. So then what has this to do with quantum physics? You see the point. I can uh, make an order so that I can give you an information. Uh, in any case, this is not in conflict with the, with the physical roles, but then I can do this when I wish, and uh, there is why we have to worry with the statistical distribution. Well, here is the point where I think there is more than simply compatibility. Um, it is because you can produce consciously a meaningful sequence, but uh, uh, suppose we are producing here a sequence with uh, a certain quantity of ones and a certain quantity of zeros, but uh, the issue is that we are not uh, able to act always consciously. Why? We need to sleep. Yes, we have, there are periods <coughs> of our life where we lose, we lose consciousness. And in this moment, you are not controlling this sequence here. Okay? And this means that when you are not controlling consciously some sequence, then here you have space for randomness. So that at the end, in our behavior, we have like a combination of conscious periods where we are acting in a, uh, you would say, conscious, free-willed way, and periods where we are producing outcomes, let us say, in a random way. So that you, at the end, at the end, the tendency will be that for large numbers, if we we are lost consciousness for a, a big time, then the outcomes we are we would produce will obey exactly the statistical rules predicted by quantum physics for, let's say, inanimate devices. Okay. To finish, I would like to say that even in this most simple case, where you say, well, the, this bit sequence or this digitalized information coming out it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. But even here, you cannot say that you have pure randomness in the sense that there is no control at all. Because there is a control already at the level that if this detector fires, this doesn't fire. So that in nature, 
you have not, never, you have never pure randomness. You have always the unity of randomness and control. No material control coming from outside space and time. So, that is the presentation, then we can start the discussion.